My guest this week is the singer-songwriter Bjorn Ulvaeus. He's one quarter of ABBA, so there's not much more I need to say to introduce him. But we do talk about what it's like to be part of one of the biggest pop groups of all time and how he feels about performing on stage every night as an avatar while he's at home in Sweden having a coffee. Bjorn, it's lovely to be with you in person. And I, I feel you. like we've just been together because I went to see the ABBA Voyage show, but you were a bit further away and you yeah. were an avatar. Yes, and you, you were together with my 79 version. Yes, yes. I was. I, I was, but, but you know, you did say before this show launched, it was a big risk. Yeah. How, how do you feel about it now? Oh, I feel so good about it because it's been uh, a tremendous success and uh, surpassed any expectations I might have had, you know, because, because the, 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 the fact, I think, the most important fact of all is that people who go there uh, don't see the tech, but they feel emotionally connected to these avatars. What, what were you worried about? I was worried about how the audience would, uh, you know, experience it. I, I, I was worried would they sit there and, and look at a video? Mm. Because it is essentially film. And, and that would have been catastrophic. So the first preview was only like 12 days before we actually opened. And, and that's when we knew the truth because people did connect. It, it, I mean, do you find it a bit creepy or dystopian in any way when you, when you, especially for you, looking at yourself, your younger self on stage? Um, not creepy, but of course, when I think about it, it's it's kind of weird, mm. um, in a wonderful way, and not dystopian, I think, unless people misuse it in the future, which we don't know, but but uh, used for this purpose to tell this story, I, I think it's wonderful. And how did it work? Because it's you, but it's been filmed with new clothes. Your bodies have got new clothes on. I understand have been, they look great, by yeah. the way. Uh, designed by, by Dolce & Gabbana and the like. H how did it actually get created, the avatars, as they've been called? Well, first, you do something called motion capture. It's when you, um, as the word says, you, you capture motion. You capture how we move, how we sing, and you measure uh, lots of measurements. All the between, dimensions. Uh, all the dimensions. And the thing is that the skull apparently doesn't change. Okay. Uh, the rest of the body falls apart, but the skull <laughs> remains the same. And, and so you capture those mo uh, movements and you scan the whole body. Right. Uh, so that's what we did for four weeks in Stockholm, the four of us, you know, actually performing our songs. So you, and, and, and is, it, is it that performance then, is your bodies having been filmed now? Y yeah, uh, but body doubles. Right. With our movements. The body doubles, they emulated our movements, sometimes made them much better. And, and then we merged those two things. Okay. And with the 79 faces. So it's, it's a merger between body doubles, motion capture of ourselves, and animation and data-driven animation creating the faces. Well, and what was it like to be together again? I mean, I know you've, you've stayed close. Um, mm, yeah. Unlike lots of bands from, from years ago, the, yeah. you've got a good relationship, it yes. sounds like. Um, but what was it like being together doing this again? Well, it was kind of strange. It, it was, it was a stage, and there were lots of cameras, but it was like, you know, doing Dancing Queen back in the seventies in some TV studio. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, the same thing, but with four geriatrics. <laughs> is is but everyone we, happy with that description? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, but we had fun doing it. I mean, we looked at each other and, oh, wow, what, what is this? 
is it emotional for you seeing your younger selves like that? You 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 were in relationships respectively. Yeah. Your lives were very different. Yeah, it it's emotional, but but most of all, it's emotional to see how people react mm. because there's so much feeling in the room, in that arena. It's it's the right size. It's three thousand, but it feels kind of intimate. Anyway, yeah, and and, and people are sometimes crying, obviously very moved by what they see and hear, uh, some which of them is what we wanted to do. And some of them have come dressed as you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I in guess. the flares yes. and in the sequins. Are, are you quite happy you're not in the old clothes that you were in, that you've been able to be dressed slightly differently? These are much more sophisticated <laughs> and tasteful. <laughs> some, some of the stuff that I see that I wore in the early days, like 70, Four seventy-five. I cringe when I see it now. It's so. But in those days, it was the glam rock era. Yeah. And everyone tried to look as outrageous as possible. Yes. Mm. And uh, yeah, it was a very different style. But the, it, it it looks beautiful. I mean, the only other thing I thought about it is that I, I find uh, Swedes very straight talking. You sort of say what you think. Mm. Um, I have a Swedish mother-in-law, big fan, and. There is something about it where, is it odd that you're showing a younger version of yourself? Like, why not have done it as how you are now? Mm. What, what do you, what do you we, think? We're not trying to hide how we look now or who we are now. It could have been a film with us acting in it. And, and, but we decided on concert. And we decided it should be from the 70s. Uh, that made it much more interesting to us, and I think to the audience as well, than to have ourselves as we are now performing. Um, so it was just an, uh, a decision taken because we thought it was more interesting. Uh, not trying to stay forever young or anything foolish like that. Has it tempted this experience, the ABBA voyage, the, the performance, has it tempted the four of you to want to go on tour again? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no way, no. We toured very, very little as, as yes. it is, yes. We toured like five, six months out of a period of perhaps eight, nine years. No, I'm just thinking, you know, the Rolling Stones keep going. Yeah, they keep going. You, you, not, you're not thinking any differently? No, no. We, we never, it was never an attraction for us to, to go on tour, actually. That's no, well, why we did it so little. And Ineta and I, we had little children. We didn't want to yes. leave them. Do you think this is a, can be seen as a live gig? I'm trying to think about what you've created. Is it, if it is a new genre completely, or you see it like that? I see it as a live gig, uh, as a hybrid live gig. And do you because think the feeling in the arena is definitely like a live concert. Do you think other bands will follow suit? Perhaps the bands that don't speak to each other? I don't know, it's interesting. I, I've been thinking about this and discussing it with people. Who, who else can do it? Who, who else is gonna follow? I'm sure uh, some of my contemporaries are, are thinking about it right now. I don't know if Mick and Keith perhaps are thinking about it and, and other people as well. I know that there's been talk of Metallica and, and uh, Barry Gibb has been to see it, so who knows? Have they asked you any of these? No, 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 Not no. Yet. They, they just go there and they have. But, but it's going to be very interesting to see someone very creative, be it an artist or a director or someone, will go there and, and have an idea mm. of how to take it one step further or uh, take it in another direction. Because um, that's going to happen sooner or later. Is there a gig from, from years gone by that you never got to see? and you wish you could have done, you wish you could have been there, that could be created by this sort of technology? Uh, the, the, the Live Aid concert when in, in, in London, which I think uh, the uh, Queen biopic is. Yes. Uh, but it would be so complicated to do, do all of these people who appeared there. Uh, one single concert. Well, that's a good one. Then. That is a good one. To that's, suggest. that's a good moment, yes. But thing is, we, uh, our DNA is in these 
avatars. We've infused ourselves into them. And you have to be alive to do that, yeah. I think. Yeah, I was so going to ask you it, about it, that. Be, be, because it, it could become kind of speculative to bring back Elvis. Yeah. It's, it's not, doesn't have the cred that this has because we are all four in it. And that makes the number of possible acts, artists, um, less, doesn't it? It does. I mean, on that note, because I was going to think, obviously, you think about the Beatles, perhaps, because, you know, mm. you've still got, as you said, Paul McCartney performing, but could you bring back others? And that you sort of answered that. But would you be happy for this to continue after you were not here anymore? Oh, yes. You would? Yes, absolutely. No, it, it's part of the legacy, this this performance, this concert, and it will exist for as long as people want to see it. Yes. Okay, so so Beyond the Grave is fine if you've been there to make it. That's yes, why it's got to have you involved, the yeah, cred for that. Yeah. It must be strange as well sometimes for you if you're standing in the kitchen, I don't know, having a coffee, knowing you're performing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I know you, you still live in Sweden, but performing in, in the UK yes, every it's, night. Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of strange. Um, of course, I've, I've been, I've, I've experienced how Mamma Mia, the musical, uh, our music was played around the globe, you know, almost 24 hours yeah. at the peak. So, but it's not the same as having your avatar. No, it's a little so, bit so, different. And I, I hope the avatar will appear in more places than one. Quantum physics. <laughs> uh, I just, I was just in Singapore which is a very interesting place to, for, to, to build, uh, if that works out, to build a replica of, of this arena. Oh, is that where you're looking to do uh, it? Yeah, and, and um, maybe somewhere in North America as well. Okay, multiple, mm. multiple Bjorns M while you're having that Bjorns coffee. Th yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what do you do, Bjorn, if you're at a party and ABBA comes on, an ABBA song? Has that happened? Um, I, I ask them politely, would you mind playing something else? Do you? Yes. And it's like, th that is kind of weird. And I feel, you know, when, so, so I, I, I actually, I, I zap when I see myself on TV. Well, you, you change channel? Yes, I change channel. Can't I, watch I don't, it. I, I, I don't know why I don't like watching myself. Well, most people don't. They find it, they do find it hard, but I thought maybe hearing it, it might just, you might start moving. Well, not when it's together with other people, but when, I, when I'm in my car and I hear it sometimes yes. played on the radio, I, 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 I can listen to it. Yeah, you could drive and along. And yeah, yes, and, I, it, and I, I have to say that it sounds surprisingly fresh. A lot of those songs sound fresh still. If you, if you had to turn one on in the car, let's say, mm -hmm. is there one that you always go for, one of your own? More than 100 to pick from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 120 or so. What would I pick if I had to put one on? I'd probably, I'd probably put on Slipping Through My Fingers. Oh, OK. Yeah, because it's so, the, the scene is so vivid in, 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 in my memory from which I wrote the, the, the lyric from when my daughter went to school okay. and, and waved and was proud and I felt, oh, this is her. I'm losing her in a way. She's doing this on, on her own and she's taking her first steps on. And that situation, every, every parent knows that. It's an interesting time in music with what makes money, what doesn't make money for new artists coming through. Um, there's also, if you're at the very successful end, of course, which you are, there's the Bob Dylans, the Bruce Springsteens selling their back catalogues for mm. huge amounts. And then you've got almost on the other side, the Taylor Swifts re-recording their music. So they own them yeah. uh, and own the rights. What, what, what do you make of that landscape with, with what's going on uh, and people selling their rights or keeping them even closer? Yeah. Uh, what isn't clear is exactly what rights they are selling, you know. It seems as though they're divulging up everything, but they're probably not. You know, some of them probably have, have 
uh, continued say in how their songs can be used and, and things like that. So, but I guess for, for older artists and songwriters who are really old, it, it, it might be that they make it easy for their kids mm -hmm. um, not to, know, have to, to inherit. Uh, yeah. It makes it easier if it's, uh, if, if it's cash. Um, and, and for someone like Taylor Swift, who's in her prime, I mean, of course, she wants to own everything herself and have total control over it. And so it's, it's different for different people. Yes, uh, because I, I mean, you, yes, we've talked, you've done other things, a lot of other things now with the music, but you've also been very um, selective, highly selective about yes. who's able to sample yeah. or use any of the yes, music. Yes, we I are. mean, Madonna was, is one of the only yeah, Come she's on. one of the few who was... Uh, Did she have to beg? <laughs> <laughs> no, not beg, but, but uh, she, she sent um, um, the recording with, with an assistant flying over the Atlantic to Stockholm from, you know, and, and playing it because she didn't want to send it on by email, which I understand. Yes. And um, Benny and I listened, and we don't, didn't have to listen more than 45 seconds because it's so brilliant. And we said, yes, go ahead. OK, so if it's brilliant and... It, yeah, a, f a few things have been brilliant. Foo Fighters have used name of the game in one of the songs okay. brilliantly as well. But that's about the only ones that we've allowed, actually. Yes. And, and we haven't allowed anything in commercials or anything like that. Why not? Um, because I think that... that if it's played in a commercial time and time again, it kind of ruins a song in a way, I think. Uh, that's at least how we've reasoned. And, and we've uh, had, obviously, many offers, but we've I said bet. no. And, 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 you know, you're... I mean, I was also thinking about, because having just seen you in the 70s uh, recently, it, it's such an unusual band because of you being in couples as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know if that has happened a lot since or before. No, I don't think, I, I don't think the mamas and papas were two couples. No. No, no, no they weren't. So th there, there isn't anything like that. Two, two couples from Sweden leading everyday boring lives in Sweden and writing songs. <laughs> it's. People, people ask me, why don't you allow a biopic to be made of you? But we said no so many times. But uh, I, I say, no, it's bo it, it, it'll be boring. Do, do you think there's anything about the fact that you were in these relationships that, that made... Uh, somebody said to me, who's a big fan of your work, that, that they felt that you had created a song for every part of love, you know, mm -hmm. every almost scenario yeah, of yeah. love, whether yes. it's daughters, yeah. Whether it's you know with your relationship, yeah, bre heartbreak, yeah. Do, do you think the fact you were uh, romantically linked had had anything to do with your ability to tap into those emotions? It might have had. Now that you mention it, I've, I've never thought about that, but of course, so many fa facets of life that I experienced through us being uh, socialising as couples. Yes. And within Agnetas and my marriage and all of that, of course, that, that inspired, I'm sure that inspired a lot of the lyrics. Yeah. And, and also, one important thing is that, uh, you know, we, we uh, lived in Sweden, in Stockholm, and we were two couples. And it, it made it very easy to be disciplined in your work. Um, there were, you know, if we had been a boy band based in London or New York or L.A., there would have been so many temptations. Yeah. Whereas we could be disciplined. We could, you know, go to work in the morning like going to the office and write songs all day. Treat, treat it like a job. Really. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and that's why we were so productive, I think, during those years. And we toured so little, which is also good, because writing songs is not easy when you're on tour. So I think that's a, 
uh, that's one of the secrets behind why we're sitting here today is that we we could concentrate on writing so much. Is there a song you wish you had written that someone else's? Oh, there's so <laughs> so many, so many songs I wish. Because you I probably had listen written. differently to a lot of people as well. You know, hearing what they've done, how yeah. they've done it. No, there's so many good songs out there. You know, my my favourite pop song is probably Ticket to Ride with the Beatles. Is it? Yeah. But there's Hotel California, and there's uh, Ave Maria, and there's uh, O Sole Mio, and uh, Smoke what? Gets in Your Eyes. Oh, so many beautiful songs. What, why, what is it about Ticket to Ride? I don't know, it's, it's, it's like a compact little pop thing that is glittering and, and has the energy and all the ingredients. Maybe it's because I was such a Beatle fan as well. Yes. And, and also, I mean, it's what, it goes back to what we were saying right at the beginning, which is you have your own memories, which is why you see when fans cry, when they mm. come to this concert, this experience, they'll be bringing certain thoughts to those songs that you do, because mm. that's what you associate music y yeah. with. And that's, yeah. uh, that's the power of it. Um, and maybe that, you know, when I said about being in the ABBA world, they'll have a connection point that just comes, comes yeah. through. Um, who are you listening to at the moment? I can't let you go without asking you that. Is there someone, it doesn't have to be new, I, it could be, but you know, who, what phase uh, are you in? I, um, actually, I haven't had a record player for, I think, 40 years, but I bought one the other day, a record player, and, and a real hi-fi system, an old-fashioned Re hi-fi okay. system. Are we talking like uh, with vinyl? Or? Y yes, vinyl, yes. And I listened to... Um, Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. That oh was right. the that was the last thing I put on before I came here. So what so what have you been listening to your music on until then? Through your phone, through your devices? Was streaming. Okay. Streaming uh, headphones and 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 other devices. Yes. Fine. But, but how, how have you found going back to vinyl all these years on? Uh, because my partner said she wanted it. And I went to one of those shops where they have it, and you sit down in a sofa, and, uh, and, and, and they play it back to you, Frank Sinatra, and, and stuff like that. And it's, it, I don't know, it, the sound is not better, but, it, but it, there, there is something with that something vinyl. Something to it. Did they know record. who you were in the shop? Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> How did that go down? Well, they feel a bit the, of pressure to make the, sure this went well. The guy was, was you know, one of those nerds. And he, he, he had to tell me everything about every <laughs> speaker and every player. So and he was a bit nervous, but he was fun. It was okay. And because, as I wonder, you, you can go about your business without people bothering you? Yeah. I mean, most people, or, or many people recognize me, but very few people bother me. Okay. But when they do, do they, is it because they need to tell you something about the song? Me. Thank you for the music. That's it. That's it. You did it. You set it all up for me. <laughs> Bjorn, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And thank you to you for being with us. Until we meet again, take care and goodbye.